Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my talk, the survival guide to 2021 Google algorithm updates. And yes, this talk is all about algorithm updates. And I really wanna try and get across the reasons why it's more important than ever before to understand the algo updates, to understand if you've been impacted by them, and also to recognize the impact that they have had previously or are likely to have on the performance of your content for the rest of 2021 and beyond. And we're really lucky because just in time for this session, we were fortunate enough, well, fortunate for some, not so for others, to see the July 1st core algo update rolled out. And of course, as always, I'm gonna be calling out some of the winners and some of the losers, and I will be naming some names. So without further ado, let's get into this session. I've divided this into uh, three parts. Part one is gonna be a little recap on core updates and what they mean and what we've seen in the past. In part two, the main part of this presentation, we're gonna focus on the July 1st core update. What happened, who was hit, and why this update is so different to previous ones. And in part three, we're gonna take a look to see what we can expect for the rest of this year and what you need to do about it. So let's get straight into it. Okay, before we begin, our recap on what we've gotten used to in the past as far as core updates are concerned, I just want to briefly clarify the difference between broad core and core web vitals. Broad core or core updates are those pre-announced updates that happen around three times a year or certainly have done for the past couple of years. And these really focus on quality. So think expertise, authority and trust or eat. And then we have core web vitals. This is all about page experience, okay? Core Web Vitals update really dropped about a month ago, 15th of June, and that is actually smearing out right now, and that's really quite interesting. And I'm gonna come back to that in a little while. But let's get on and go back in time to 2019. Here we saw three huge, really upsetting for many websites, updates in March, June, and September. And the thing about these updates is that they really targeted heavily or focused on high YMYL, your money or your life. So if your website and your content was likely to impact the future health, wealth, or well-being of the audience, then you were potentially a target. And here we have a visibility index with five separate websites. And here we're tracking around 2,000 terms in a really high YMYL space. Absolutely catastrophic um, updates for some. And the important thing to note is, you know, if you were impacted, there was absolutely no recovery for around 115 days. Also in 2019, don't forget, we had BERT um, in October. We also had neural matching in November. Didn't see too much about those and certainly haven't got the time today to talk about BERT. But it's these types of impacts that really got people talking about core and that's why they got so much attention. Into 2020, last year, we saw core updates in January, May and in June. May in particular, May the 4th, that was particularly tough. And this visibility index here is focusing on the top 10, although I've only got uh, half a dozen of them here, um, retail sites, fashion retail sites, and we're looking in particular here at women's fashion. And I'm gonna name some of these players shortly. Here we can see the January update, um, not quite as impactful as May, and then in December, a substantial update. And indeed, we can see here clearly that some people who gained in one, lost in another. And that's the important thing to know here. You don't have to do anything, but you can still be impacted negatively or positively, regardless of what's happened in the previous update. May the 4th, I mentioned, was brutal, and particularly brutal for finance. Take a look at this website here. This is a US-based um, finance website called Credit Karma. And this sort of impact here for some high volume search terms is just the sort of thing that we got used to seeing with previous core updates. They impacted the SERP at scale. This was a catastrophe. Why were they impacted? Well, I took a look at some of their content. 
you know, and I couldn't really find answers to things like, well, who's actually writing this piece of financial advice that can really impact on my future wealth, okay? Um, the question I had in my mind was, well, is this content just designed to reel me in? You know, is this designed just to, just to make a sale? And then I took a, a look off-site and some of the reviews I saw were not particularly brilliant compared to competitors who were scoring much better on those eat signals. Okay, that's what core updates used to look like. So what can we learn from those previous years? Well, three updates a year, around 115 days in between each one. Recovery, chances of zero. Okay, previous updates hit the SERP at scale. Didn't matter if you're on page one or page five, you still saw an impact and high, your money or your life was a heavy target. Things have changed. Okay, let's bring things up to date and talk about this year. And I think you're gonna agree that 2021, from a core perspective, is very different to previous years. So I've got a really nice visualization here, and we're gonna focus on top left and bottom right. There were two spam updates, but we didn't see too much impact from those. So the first update we saw this year was the product review update, which dropped between April 8th and April 22nd. Now, unless you were reviewing products, you may not have seen much going on, but if you were reviewing products, then there's a chance you will have been impacted positively or negatively. So if you are writing content, for example, reviewing the top 10 electric vehicles or the top 10 moisturizers, perfumes, aftershaves, etc., Google updated their guidelines and those websites that weren't necessarily adhering to these guidelines or perhaps just producing content for affiliate revenue without caring about quality, they were most definitely negatively impacted and critically, that impact played out on page one. And by that, I mean, there weren't big changes within the SERP, but there were subtle shifts from position one to three, from three to five, etc. Then the core update started, and we saw the first core update on June the 2nd. Wasn't a great impact. Lots of people did see it, but we reviewed millions of URLs and didn't see a huge amount compared with the July update that happened very recently, only this month. In between those two updates, and I'm gonna come back to July in a second, was the June 15th Core Web Vitals or Page Experience update. This one I've actually given three meteorites to. This is potentially hazardous and potential disaster region for some because it's been smeared. There was a little bit of impact, but the real risk here is that if your page performance scores are actually poor, red, or even need improvement, amber, in comparison with your competitors, then there's a, a good chance that by the time the algo has finished its smeared rollout at the end of August or even early September, you're gonna look back and you're gonna see that attritional day-on-day -day decline that you don't notice on a daily basis. And that's the most dangerous thing about this particular update. And there's a reason that Google gave us 12 months notice and set those targets for loading, interactivity, and visual stability. So if you're not looking at those, you need to look at them and you need to compare your scores with those of your competitors. And then we come to the big update, the one we've all been waiting for, that July core, or the second part of Google's first core update of 2021 to confuse matters even more. And what did we see here? We saw a big shakeup within visibility, particularly for the top 10. As you move down to look at positions 11 to 20, there wasn't a huge amount of movement. Yes, this one is different. It played out on page one, as you're going to see, but it certainly was a big shakeup and it was subtle and super impactful. Let's take a look. First, at the sectors that were particularly impacted. Travel, gifts, fashion, electricals, online dating. Okay, lots of movement up and down. Automotive, investments. Okay, those were just some of the sectors that were notably impacted. Let's drill down on travel. Okay, this is the impact that the June and July cause had on some of the major players within the UK travel sector 
focusing on destinations within the UK. Terms that are pretty critical at the moment. The July core there, you can see TripAdvisor had a nice hike. Expedia lost lots of page one visibility. I'm gonna zoom in on that in a second. Hotels.com on the other hand, they went up from well below page one up onto page one. Late Rooms, Kayak, Premier Inn, all impacted. Let's focus in on Expedia. What do we see here? Positions one to 50 in Google UK. And up until the July core, we saw nothing, only stability, really great visibility above the fold on page one. The algo dropped on the first, we see the changes on the second. Okay, if you didn't see them on the second, it wasn't the algo update. And there they were, subtle changes from high on page one, further down. And this was typical of every single sector we looked at. Remember the Credit Karma chart I showed you before? That's what core updates used to do. Now they're different and they're subtle. So in a visibility index, you may not see a huge drop, but these have been super impactful. Here's Hotels.com. So contrast that with a good steady above the fold visibility with lots of up and down movements before this, but as soon as that July core update dropped, up there on page one, really great stable performance. A very contrasting algorithm update. So let's turn to fashion. Everybody wants to know what's going on in fashion retail. And I know lots of people watching this will be working within this space, and I am actually gonna call out some of the winners and the losers. So let's start with this chart or charts here, competitive discovery charts. What do we see? The highlights next, brilliant, strength to strength, 23% increase in above the fold visibility for the terms that we're looking at. We're looking at around 1,500 search terms here. ASOS down, Boohoo up. Yes, they've bounced back up because they lost it in the May 4th update previously. John Lewis up finally. We're getting back there. H&M down several places, misguided. Biggest drop there out of the top 10. Let's chart some of these. Visualized over time in the form of a visibility index. Okay, based on over a thousand search terms. Looks like two tuning forks. Big winner there, boo-hoo, straight up. Algo hit first, they moved on to second. Google always says that these updates take several days to bed down, but really, after 48 hours, that's where they settle. H&M dropped, contrastingly. Pretty little thing up, shop style down. Let's move on. What goes up? can come down. Remember I mentioned Boohoo, you can see there in that second block, that May 4th update, the last core update or one of the previous ones from the previous year, they tanked. And then we see level. There's no recovery from a core, but as you'll see later, there are things that you can do by turning other dials. Boohoo then went up in this July update. Perhaps they've been working hard on their eat signals. Remember, core is about quality. Pretty little thing, you can see there a very similar pattern. They dropped in May, they dropped in December. Okay, what goes up can come down. So remember that as we move forward. And a question, question we often get is, how do you know if you've been impacted by an algo? First thing you need to ask, is it me? Well, sometimes it is. Here's a big online UK department store. No prizes for guessing who it is. I've often called them out. Um, you know who you are if you're out there. And this is late January. They saw a drop for multiple categories of search term. So the first question you might ask is, oh, is it just me or is it an algorithm update? Well, compare yourself with competitors. And here we can see, yes, it is you. Always compare with the rest of the landscape. That wasn't an algo update. Critically, features are becoming more important within the SERP. Let's take a look at the BBC. 2,000 recipe terms. This is the BBC Good Food page. Look at this. 
Okay, just after the 1st of July update, was this the ALGO? Well, no, it wasn't. Because remember what I said before, when ALGOs drop, they drop precisely. They dropped on the 1st, you see changes on the 2nd. We saw changes on the 3rd. So this was not the algorithm. Then what was it? Okay, first of all, separate out mobile from desktop. And having done that, we can see clearly that mobile was completely unaffected. So this is starting to starting to raise the question, well, is this the search landscape? Because if that was algorithmic, they would have almost certainly both dropped. Okay, was it a drop or has something changed? Well, let's include features in the mix. Okay, so here we've got the same 2000 terms split into five categories with features. They haven't dropped but the landscape has changed and they're still visible, but in a different form within that same search landscape. Here we go. This is what happened. So here we can see two shots, two slightly different recipes here that we're looking for, baking and banana bread. And on the left hand side, okay, we've got baking recipes, BBC Good Food, the organic position has been removed, okay, along with some of the others. And then on the right there, we've got the classic organic along with the recipe card. And when I looked in detail at this, it turns out that Google is actually on one day and another taking, removing, adding, swapping, but always keeping at least one organic presence there. So this is SERP testing. This is intent testing at its finest. So don't get caught out by that. Always include those features, all the features, when you are looking at your visibility and trying to work out if you have been penalized. Okay, let's move on to the next section. So what can we expect for the rest of this year? Well, I'll put good money on two things happening. We already know that Core Web Vitals is going to roll out until the end of August, which means that those sites who, in comparison with better performing competitors, who don't have um, comparable um, scores as far as Core Web Vitals are concerned, are going to attritionally lose visibility. They're going to look back in September and wonder what's happened. I'm pretty sure also based on previous years and the data we have that there's going to be another, probably one broad core update. Okay, so what can we do about this? Well, well, on top of our business as usual, day-to-day -day contextual optimization that I know that we are all employing to ensure that we don't have any conflict in our ecosystems, there are two tracks of work. We've got performance and we've got quality. We've got core web vitals, which can't wait, and we've got those eat signals, which you cannot risk. Even if you did well in the previous June 1st core update, that doesn't mean to say you won't be negatively impacted from the next one. So we need to start making sure that we are ticking all the boxes and I'll show you a matrix and a way of doing that in a second. So Core Web Vitals, if we take track one, drop 15th of June and has got several weeks left to play out. The only difference between a broad core impact and a Core Web Vitals impact is that it is significantly easier and Google is significantly more responsive to the changes you make from a page performance perspective. And you can see this in Google Search Console. Can you do anything when you are negatively impacted by a quality or a core web vitals update? Probably not. The evidence suggests you can't do anything. But what can you do if you have been negatively impacted where you still have those core web vitals levers to work on now? And there are plenty of tools at your disposal to help you improve that performance and make up for any losses as far as broad core is concerned. So top three things for core web vitals because every website you look at and every video has a hundred things to do. Okay, make sure you're using the core web vital report in Search Console. It's brilliant. Okay, get down to the details with Lighthouse where you can get loads of information on how to compress images, minifying CSS and HTML and JavaScript and, and using sizing attributes appropriately, etc. The list goes on. And don't wait. Don't wait till the end of August. Get started with small improvements now. And when it comes to eat, well, why not build a matrix? 
here's a sample of a matrix I built in, in um, Excel. And if anybody wants to get their hands on the full matrix, then just reach out to me afterwards on LinkedIn or whatever, and I can share that with you. But start ticking those boxes. Make sure you're sending out those signals, whether it's for the creators of the content, your authors, the main content, or your website. We have expertise, authority, and trust. And if you go about it in this way with a matrix, I guarantee you between now and the next update, if you start to tick those boxes and send out those quality signals, your performance is likely to increase. So in conclusion, at the end of this short session on Algo updates, there's going to be another core update this year. Don't wait for it. Page one is the target. These updates now play out on page one. So if you're on page one, you have a lot more to be worried about than any competitors or anybody else who's on page two. Turn the dials on your performance scores now using those tools I mentioned earlier. Don't panic if you get impacted by anything or if you think you get impacted, okay? Use SERP data and really more than ever before now monitor those SERP features as well as your classic links. So that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Um, there's plenty more on this in my newsletter, Shed News. I don't know whether there's a link in here, but certainly if you subscribe or you search for SEO in a Shed News, you'll find a bunch more information. So now, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day and all of the other amazing videos.